Hello again everybody and welcome back to another edition of On the Range in the ATNC Warthog. And today I'm going to close out this little mini-series I've been doing on the AGM-65 Maverick Guide and Missile by looking at the Force Correlate Tracking Method and go over that mode that you can put the AGM-65 Seeker into and show you the capability that that gives you and show you a little bit about what that's intended to do for you. So for all the shots that I've taken so far, it's had the missile in the centroid tracking method. Centroid tracking being the method that you get right there where it picks out a target on the ground that is about the same shape and about the same size as a tank or a vehicle and the tracking gates collapse over it and it uses the contrast between uh, that and the surroundings to a track on the centroid position of the target. It just basically locks it up and then goes for the dead center position on it. That tracking method is only really uh, good for vehicle sized targets and once you get into larger targets it doesn't really work as well because you in a lot of cases if the target is a little bit larger than the size you're going to want possibly a specific point on that target to get hit and not just the center of it. So let me break lock and recenter my Maverick real quick and demonstrate what you get with the force correlate the tracking method. Now as I mentioned in another video, three of the four AGM-65 variants that we have in the uh, DCS simulation have the force correlate track method available. The AGM-65D does not. That one can only do a centroid track, but the G, H, and K model Maverick can do a force correlate track. So as I come back around, let me demonstrate, or let me describe, how you switch it into the force correlate tracking mode to begin with. And by default, the Maverick does use the centroid tracking method, but if I want to switch to the force correlate method, I can, on the boat switch, switch it to the center position. And assuming I have the appropriate model of Maverick called up, that's going to enable the force correlate tracking to work. So let me dive real quick and show you exactly what you get on the dis excuse me on the display. So if I attempt to track a target now, you can see that instead of the open tracking gate, now the gates fully collapse and it's it's almost like a, a pure crosshair. So I can slew the crosshair around and when it picks up on a point on the ground that it can lock on, you'll get the same indications of lock that you get in the centroid method. You'll get the flashing pointing cross but the crosshairs will be solid and that means that as long as you have your pointing cross flashing that the missile is going to, tr to guide and track on that point so that allows you to on a large target pick out a specific point that you want the missile to impact. So let me recage it real quick and show one other consideration. So usually it is that simple you just simply move the boat switch to the center position and then when you attempt to track a target you will be using the force correlate track mode but there is one little gotcha here and let me come around and just lock up on something at random out here in the distance or attempt to lock up now the gotcha is that can we unlock it okay and there's a good centroid track now watch what happens if I put the boat switch into the center position now now it goes into the Seeker Boreside bore mode and does not go into the Force Correlate Track mode. So you can only switch to Force Correlate Track when you do not have a target locked. So now let me go to the center position and once I stabilize, I will be in the Force Correlate Tracking mode. So the key there is to when you're switching from the Centroid to Force Correlate Track by going to the center switch position, uh, make sure that you don't have a target locked up because it won't work as advertised if you do have a target locked. So unlock and then switch. Okay, so let me go ahead and demonstrate how this works on a uh, sort of a real type of target that you would use this method on. And I'll try to pick out a bridge out here over the Ngiri River and I see a bridge out there in the distance. So let me go ahead and sit up on that and I will demonstrate exactly why Force Correlate Track works and, and uh, why you should use it for specific types, types of targets. I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I'm approaching the target that I have in mind, and I see a little road bridge out there that I want to to take out. So as I position the Maverick Reticule over that location, let me recage it real quick and make this easier. Okay, so let me reposition it out there and slew it around, have a look in my Maverick sensor. Now, starting in the, I'll put it back into the uh, Centroid track. Now, if I do happen to get a centroid track on this bridge, here's what it'll look like. It'll be locked up, and see how it's just locked up this big, uh, basically just a blob. It just locks up on the bridge itself, so that I can't really count on it hitting a specific point. What I really want to do is hit this little support column uh, on the bridge. But with the centroid track that's there by default, I can't really count on it hitting a specific location. So let me recenter my Maverick and break lock. Now I'll put the boat switch back into the center position to put it into the force correlate tracking method and I will come back around on this target. So again I will be right back. And now turning back into the target area with the Maverick Seeker in the force correlate tracking mode. I'm going to steer the reticule out there to the target, slew it over, and stabilize, and try to pick out a specific point on this bridge that I want to have the Maverick impact. So let me slew up to this support column and see if I can get it to slew over there. Okay, so that's a good track. Okay, let me fire the missile. And now you'll see that it is going to track on that specific column that I had locked up. So let's see how this does. Okay, good impact, but it uh, looked like it hit the water first, so uh, not exactly the result that I was looking for, but you can see that that hit right at the exact spot that I was aiming, and that's what the benefit is of the Force Correlate track. Now, you really only want to use this tracking mode on large targets or targets where, like in this case, there is a specific point on the target that you want to impact. It's not really suitable for vehicles or tanks. Uh, you're far, far better off going with the basic centroid track for a tank target. But, you know, the Force Correlate track does have its uses. And although, come to think of it, I've never during an A-10 mission that I've flown in DCS been in a situation where I've needed to use Force Correlate track. But it is there for hardened facilities or larger typed, uh, type of facilities or targets where you want to hit a specific point. So hopefully that clears things up for you when it comes to the two different tracking methods that Mavericks can be employed in. And I hope you did find this useful. So thanks again for watching everybody and I will see you next time.